people of LA, hello. Let's see if people are joining. Oh, there we go. Got some beautiful people joining us for another Artery podcast. Uh, again, you know, uh, this is Alex Feliciano, my partner, Julia Francis, and we make up the Artery, uh, Artery DTLA team. Um, we are local artists and what we want to do is we want to bring with uh, bring to you inspiring artists uh, that you can connect with um, through this platform. Thankfully, that we've been uh, been able to curate mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. today. We're going to have uh, one of our dear dear friends, Patrick Semple, uh, who has graciously been donating this uh, beautiful beautiful piece that you've been seeing uh, not only on our podcast but on the other uh, happening in downtown LA podcast as well. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, welcome, Patrick. Welcome Thank Patrick. you. Welcome, yeah. wel welcome to my world. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Yeah. yeah. So good to be back. Thank good. you. Guys. Yeah, so definitely. So glad to have you here. Um, yeah. Just mm -hmm. so we can refresh, Patrick Semple is a local painter here in LA. We met him. Alex and I met him a couple years ago. Yeah. I think it's been like a couple years. years or something. Yeah. Two or three no. years ago. No, like yeah. Two years. No really, way. I, I think it's yeah. been two. D okay. Yeah. It just no, feels you know like me. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's like a blur. It feels like forever. Yeah. But we met at a live art event um, that was happening. It was a collaboration of all different um, different mediums of arts with music and dance and art and painting. And um, Patrick was one of the artists who live painted for us at this event. And we just fell in love and been together yeah. ever since oh, then. Uh -huh. <laughs> the yeah. times. Yeah. The times. The times where we can gather, you for know. For sure, yeah. So and just truly connect. Painting. Yeah. <laughs> All kinds of fun oh, stuff. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, so... Yeah, here we are, Patrick. Well, yeah, back in the hot seat. Yeah, yeah. seriously. Thanks no, guys. thanks for so. thanks for coming by. You know, I know you have you know a lot on your plate. You've been really busy. Yeah. Uh, tell us what you've been up to. Well, um, I've been busy painting like a madman mm -hmm. and uh, doing my thing, doing what I know how to do best mm -hmm. and serve the people. I know everyone's sick of staring at all four walls in their rooms oh, so for sure want to yeah. get the artwork out to the people mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. it's been good i've been making a lot of sales like nice around the world some in europe mm -hmm. spain mm. sweden Germany. wow that's awesome yeah yeah instagram yeah. Man. that is the kind of reach social media <laughs> can give people now it's insane yeah so that's no, awesome it's yeah um and mm -hmm. uh and yeah i've been doing a lot of these small paintings which we can take a look at it yeah for yeah, sure they're kind of mm -hmm. they're a little more accessible price wise mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh for people like like mm -hmm. ourselves who are it could be in more of a transitory phase in our lives where we're moving or mm -hmm. we live in apartments it's nice just to have a small like movable piece oh of, of course of course yeah. how did you get how did you get started on that i mean i know i mean when we first connected i know you were kind of working a lot with scale and it's it's very interesting because you know for me as as well as being an abstract artist it's like it's hard to want to you want to be grandiose and big and kind of allow you that that type of free expression to kind of flow where it will like how did you or where did you decide to manage it like down into this like constrained kind of medium if anything yeah, yeah. sure yeah um well it, it swings like a pendulum sometimes i'll, f I'll feel mm -hmm. real bold and my ideas will feel real bold and i'll need it'll just create a need for uh -huh. a bigger canvas to paint on for but sure uh, but i find that with these little paintings there's like more of an immediacy mm. interesting uh, they f like they're almost a little more automatic, a little more stream of consciousness so that mm. there's no delay. There's no like pa paint a few brush strokes and then take a nap or eat a sandwich. Yeah. Go wake up the next day, do it again. Like mm -hmm. I can just <laughs> I see <laughs> what I want to do and uh -huh. I can just make it happen. And there's like a real satisfaction in that. And uh, awesome. Mm. And, par you know, part of what I do is I like to teach by example if I can. Mm -hmm. uh, to to live and to paint without attachment to the outcome. Interesting. And uh, and just to be unattached and yeah. And when I say unattached, I don't mean like oh uh, like don't get dressed, don't go to work. <laughs> screw it off. Yeah. I mean just like uh, just having trust in like mm -hmm. nature and the intelligence of nature and the 
uh, I, I believe that there's like an intelligence that kind of flows through everything and like mm-hmm. it's why grass grows and it's why flowers grow and, mm. and if we can just if we want to trust ourselves and relax and just let things unfold the way they unfold so that's yeah. that's what i bear in mind when i paint that's beautiful well how about with that being said can we how about you open one of yeah. these yeah, one right. of these ones that's a yeah, great prelude well let's do it together yeah for sure like a present Yes. People say DIY, Ooh. but I like to say DIT. Do Ooh. it together. Do it together. Ooh. Wow, community. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah. There's a there's a book called The Art of Asking. Interesting. It's really good. It's all about uh-huh. it's all about that. Like yeah. DIT. Do it DIT. Together. Interesting. How'd you how'd you find the book? Oh man, I, I'm, I'm terrible right now. Oh. I can't. Don't let us know. Don't worry. <laughs> We're let's focus on on the goods right here. <laughs> wow. Oh, this is, you just posted this one. I, I just posted this one, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we literally, yeah. yeah that's right. Oh, my goodness. Wow, wow gorgeous. Check that so out. everybody can see at Bring home. it in close. Wow. Oh, it's beautiful. It's so bright. Ooh, and look at oh, this. Oh, here's the other one to compliment. Wow. <laughs> yeah, look at this, guys. Check out the beautiful this splash of color. <laughs> And are we go, do you go typically by like a like a set size or all these kind of like the same size? They're or all the same. They're all nine by twelve. Nine by twelve. Yeah. Nine by twelve. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very and nice. I like to frame them all too. You yeah, frame no, them all yourself. Very yeah, beautiful. Right? Very clean. Yeah, yeah thank Allo- you. Definitely allows the. I mean, definitely allows all this expression to kind of really breathe by how clean the framing is. Oh, if it wasn't for woodshop yeah. class in high school, <laughs> I would have failed school. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> thank God for woodshop, right? <laughs> Wow, man, these are these are beautiful. Thank yeah, you. and you That's said uh, you were telling me a little bit earlier that you have a lot of experience in framing because you worked at a framing shop. I well. did. What? I so did my time at the frame, shop. At the frame shop. He paid his frame shop. When was this? Uh, that was in the summer of 2018. 2018. Yeah, I worked. Okay, like cool. Eight long hours a day at this frame shop. Uh huh. It is. I, yeah. I was telling Julia when you pay, you know, out the wazoo for your picture to be. It's for good reason. Oh, mm-hmm. definitely. It's, mm-hmm. I mean, that I stuff believe it. is. It's a craft. The math yeah. <laughs> involved <laughs> is, uh-huh. is painstaking. I mean, uh, just framing these little things, you're, mm-hmm. you know, uh, when I frame like mural size works like these, it's, you mm-hmm. can round off an eighth of an inch or just sand it a little bit. But yeah. mm-hmm. here we're talking like uh-huh. twelfths of an inch and sixteenths of it an inch. It just gets more exact, yeah. a little Two bit more. Two and a half <laughs> sixteenths, yeah. <laughs> It's so. it's really interesting. Uh, I mean, in the fo- in the world of art, there's so many things that um, we think that we don't need to do. You know, like I don't need to take a math class. I don't need to take these kind of like structural classes that have mm-hmm. nothing to do with like color and painting or whatever. But here we are. It comes. It all oh, comes yeah. full circle, and you're like, damn it. Maybe hey, I should have. <laughs> maybe I should have taken a math class. I had an interesting. We had oh, an interesting question on uh, business. Money. Yes. We had an interesting question on Instagram. Uh, there was someone who said, uh, "Double O's asked." How can a struggling artist get started? How can this struggling artist get started? Mm, that's a good one. Yeah. Um, just try everything. Try everything. Just try everything. Have faith in yourself. Have uh-huh. faith in your ideas. And just, like, lock the door. Close the door. <laughs> put on your favorite music. Uh-huh. Put your favorite song on repeat. Yeah. And just, like, mm. crank out a lot of work. Don't feel too attached to the masterpiece for sure necessarily i would just uh just open all the channels you know that's what art is about you want to mm-hmm. open open all the channels like mm-hmm. take care of yourself in a way that you can mm. remain open it's mm-hmm. kind of like when when you're looking at the sky to see an, a ufo you gotta look <laughs> at the whole sky you gotta keep yeah. the whole sky open for sure for yeah. just that one little signal to uh-huh. deal with you. Mm-hmm. so so, like, for something like this, were you just open to just framing? Like, or did was that just something, like, where you're just, like, like, oh, I just need a job? Or were you already interested in framing? Um, I, I always liked the way that uh, paintings look uh-huh. framed by the artist in yeah. museums. Interesting. Like, in LACMA, before it was, like, before the whole west side of the building was torn down and renovated, there mm-hmm. was like, 
I know you just yeah. nodded like you know what I'm talking <laughs> yeah. about. There was like a whole abstract expressionist wing with mm-hmm. like yeah. Helen Frankenthaler and yes. Joan Mitchell paintings. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and you can see that they used like shitty molding from the hardware store. So yeah. pardon my French. Yeah. And just like <laughs> tacked it together. But uh-huh. but just the dissonance mm-hmm. of that simple material with like this priceless work of art, I think mm-hmm. is such a cool yeah, yeah. Like, it's cool uh, dialogue. Contrast. Yeah, I think it, it brings Very like cool. real mm-hmm. humanity to a, a piece. You know, just kind of like the idea of like we're all supposed to be perfect. Or we're all supposed to, w- in terms of art, like we're all supposed to paint a certain way or be a certain way or like mm-hmm. state of the structure so that you can make a lot of money and get that prestige and you have to have the best materials to do it. But it's not really the case at all. And I know so many more artists now who are getting most of their stuff from Home Depot and getting most yeah. of their stuff from like the junkyard or whatever uh-huh. and they're making <laughs> priceless piece of art you yeah. know and it's nice. awesome it's mm-hmm. just really great that um, yeah. more oh. people can recognize that I was at Ace at uh, Ace Hardware the other day and yeah. just fantasizing like <laughs> what if they did like a code red lockdown right now and it we uh-huh. just had to stay put in this Ace Hardware. I was like, I don't <laughs> you'd be in heaven. Paint tile, yeah. like, I could make so much <laughs> shit, and it would be so like, great. Like <laughs> some uh-huh. of these people around, I'll pay them as models. We mm-hmm. do like a whole like oh, Last be a, Supper uh-huh. scene. And that would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I believe you do it too. Yeah. <laughs> but, but anyway, um, yeah, for for starting out, it's uh, every day I start. Every mm-hmm. time I sit down to paint a painting, it's mm-hmm. square one. You know? mm-hmm. No, for sure. Uh, just remain unattached to the outcomes and mm-hmm. do what you do best. Mm. You know, that's it. It doesn't matter if you're good or bad at it. It's not up to you. You can't really choose that. Mm. Yeah. You know, it's mm. kind of it's kind of like you can't choose your parents. Yeah. You mm. can't choose if it mm-hmm. looks good or bad. Art doesn't give a crap if it's good or bad. It's just, <laughs> just art. Do what you know how to do. And uh-huh. and let it flow. And, and there are people out there mm-hmm. who are going to love it. So just like hashtag it on Instagram. There you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that, I know that's like so oversimplified. But, but no, I think it's I think the simplest pattern is always going to be the best pattern. Right. You know, I think I mean, I'm sure for all of us in terms of our our journeys in the art world, it all kind of started with just a love, a simple love for art. And I think if you if you if you are backed by that kind of a passion and you feel like it's your purpose and it's something that it's like you want to like breathe into your life, I, then mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's meant to be, you know, it's like yeah. you say, it's like, you can't, you can't stop. You can't stop that wave from crashing into you. You know, you just kind yeah. of get swept into that current. So, Oh yeah. Just no. the other day, someone told me like, man, my kindergartner could paint that painting. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, I, I, love, love, I was like, that one. yes, that's like the highest compliment yeah. I could receive because we don't give kindergartners enough due for mm-hmm. the artwork they do. Mm-hmm. Got another mm-hmm. another good <laughs> question from it's very true. Uh, from Fordano uh, Liao. Uh, they asked, they're asking you, Patrick, how did you get started on painting and advertising your work? Painting and advertising. Yeah, how did you get started in, in painting? How, yeah, how, about, how about we break it up? How did you get started in painting? And then how did you get started in advertising? I guess how were you able to reach people? Yeah. Did you, have you always been on Instagram or did you have maybe another yeah. another way? Also, yeah. thank you guys. We were pre- how long ago did you start? There you go. Boom. Mm. How long ago, too? How long ago? How long ago? A lot of questions. Good questions. Just start. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> thank wow. you, by the way, over there, Instagram. Well, I've been painting all my life, for sure. Mm. For mm. sure. That's like something I... I've known that just, I like, I don't even think of it as something I'm good or bad at. It's just, I must do it. Mm. Mm. I must. Yeah. So, like, whatever you do, whether you're a shoe shiner or a boat mechanic, mm. if that's what you must do, then. Yeah. Then, yeah. Uh, Sometimes you don't rip. get a choice. It, like, it chooses you. and. For sure. Yeah. And uh-huh. uh, one of my art teachers in university, um, she always talked about how she wanted to she knew she wanted to be an artist and she tried all different mediums but she always came back to figure painting and she was like mm. i was always the best at figure painting but i hate figure painting and she's like i just can't control it it's just like who i am and i finally decided to accept it and i've thrived in it but she was like i really wish i could be a sculptor like i want to mm-hmm. make things and she has but her figure paintings you could tell they're just like they're just a dream it's like mm. effortless yeah. 
like true color beauty understanding of the body Mm -hmm. and she's like this is who i am and i accept it and Mm -hmm. that was one of the big lessons and i always think about that is like am i doing what i was chosen to do am i like really Mm -hmm. embodying the kind of medium and materials that i should be you know or am i fighting against it yeah that's a good good lesson i think that definitely kind of circles back to what we were talking about being open about you know, like, for example, you know, something trying different different sizes of the medium, trying different ways to be versatile and to be, you know, as as expansive and also as finite as you can be. Mm-hmm. You know, I know for myself, like one of the things that I've started doing and I think is because I think you you and uh, and definitely Julie inspired it was trying to scale down as opposed to scale up, Interesting. you know, and uh, drawing back to what uh, one of our viewers was saying, uh, kind of asking questions about, you know, how do, th- how do they get to that next step? Mm-hmm. And I think that I think is a very, very true step, again, about being open. Don't let, don't let yourself be confined to one size, to one type yeah. of paint, one type of medium, you know, there's a, there's a world. But it's like you said about being in Ace Hardware <laughs> and being able to, like, there's so much stuff that you can do that we, that we haven't even tried yet, you know? But nice. that's the thing. It's just, like, a, appreciating that I like art. That. I like the way you said Yeah. That. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but... Uh, so many things to try. There's, like, not for enough sure. time. I know. Exactly. We have to do it all right now. <laughs> the list ever grows, right? The yeah. list ever grows. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I would advise... Any visual artist, just to get a sketch pad, get a mm-hmm. notepad. I, I carry a notebook and I just draw on it with crayons. Mm. You know, if I see like an orange mailbox that looks really? cool uh, next to a greenhouse, I'll uh-huh. just draw that. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. You know, just keep yeah. it flowing. And mm-hmm. ideas beget ideas beget mm. work. Ooh, and, uh, I love that. Yeah, yeah. And and, and also. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm different in this regard. Maybe not. But mm-hmm. I go through cycles where there's a life and there's a death. Okay. And there's a rebirth. Mm-hmm. And some months I am just like, I need to draw the shades and just watch Netflix. Yeah. And not do anything. <laughs> <laughs> give the give that side give side of your brain a break, right? Yeah. You know. Absolutely. And, uh-huh. and, and just let it die. Oh, for sure. Because I have full faith and trust that it's gonna come back. Mm-hmm. And, uh, mm-hmm. and you know when I when I find myself feeling like the painting is uh, it, it it'll just seem ornamental or it'll mm-hmm. seem like it's not mm-hmm. doing it for me then I'll just walk away and just yeah like, that's okay that's a good question I, m- I mean when is there like this is it just based off of a feeling when it gets to that point of being ornamental because I mean, I think that's always been a question, right, when it comes to abstract work. Is it just, like, for aesthetics or, you know, what, where where does the depth lie? Well, you know? don't get me wrong. Yeah. I, I think painting and artwork, uh-huh. for me, it's, like, all about I want it to look really sexy. Oh, of course. Super <laughs> and alive. Yeah, yeah. I want it just to look hot and look pretty. This painting is exuberant. Honesty. It's alive. Yeah. It is hot. <laughs> Actually, like if you ever wanted to make one like that. Again, like this is Patrick Semple's work, and his Instagram account is at Patrick, P A T R I C K underscore Semple, S E M P L E underscore. Did I get that right? Thank you. Yes. Mm. All right, people are, yeah, just uh, another, another great uh, person well, in the audience of just trying to figure out how to get more, to your, more of your work. Oh, anything. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, thank you guys. Yeah. Feel no, of free course. To, feel free to inquire. Yeah. Mm. But going back to the original questions, I think, yeah. um, which was uh, advertising as well, not mm-hmm. just maybe even starting a little bit before that, which was um, your process of, of getting started. Getting sure. started, and yeah. Getting started into eventually being able to sell and advertise and reach people. Mm-hmm. Sure. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, at times right now, or uh, mm-hmm. the state of affairs is. It's not like how it's always been where you can apply to galleries or coffee shops or what have you. you yeah, know? for sure. You just got to kind of adapt and mm-hmm. figure it out. Yeah. I, mean, I, I devote whole days just to doing research and doing like marketing research. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Who, where can I get, who needs a painting right now? Or Interesting. Uh, yeah. So there's a lot of different things you can do. I, I like, um, hello, hello, hello. I, uh, <laughs> um, like pre pandemic, yeah, I would just go places where I was known by my first name. Really? And I know people by uh-huh. their first name and they uh-huh. like me and they wanted to 
helped me out and I said, you know, wanted to hang some paintings here and here mm -hmm. for a month. And yeah. Uh, that's one way to do it. For Just sure. go where you're known by your name. Definitely. And, uh, yeah. and also, um, like, hook your family up with some art. Mm. Or get them involved. Get your family involved. Mm -hmm. And maybe they'll hang a piece of art in their house and then have a baby shower. Mm. And then 10 people will be like, notice oh it. Oh, my ask goodness. <laughs> ask your mom yeah. about it. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. It's not uh -huh. overrated to... Um, involve your family, you know, oh, like sure. to think to think about hanging all of your artwork in your dad's house or your mom's house, your cousin's house, or whatever. Like it's not it's not above like it's not above anyone to like do that. I think that everybody should consider that. It's oh, like yeah. one of the best blessings I think for a lot of people. Just like mm -hmm. you know, for you and what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, word of mouth. Mm -hmm. Word of it mouth spreads yeah. like wildfire yeah. more than you would believe. For Don't sure. Underestimate it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Uh, and yeah, really just have full faith in yourself and believe and, mm -hmm. um, you know, you, some, not everyone has the, uh, the privilege of having a family that loves what they're doing, you know, so mm -hmm. maybe your mom wants you to be an investment banker, yeah. Yeah. not a painter. So, mm -hmm. a so it's important to find your people and find your friends who can build up your fire and put some kindling on your fire you for know, sure like you guys do for <laughs> you guys. We do like we do for each other you know i think that's the thing right yeah you know uh i i definitely love to bring back to the idea of giving i think that's that's been such a a beautiful thing especially in in how things are going right now in terms of the state of affairs mm -hmm. of today it's like i think if you can give to someone, you know, especially when it comes to, like you said, an accessible piece, and you can see how that how that just brings some light into a person's eye, yes. I think that's that's where it's at, you know. And then, you know, from that one act of giving, it just leads to this brush fire of just beauty. Like I know that for some of your pieces, or I don't know if you're still doing it, um, you were donating a percentage to. Um, to a non charity or to a nonprofit organization, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I do I have like a couple uh -huh. go to nonprofit yeah. organizations like uh like Justice and Power Now. Awesome. Uh there's one that's like Justice in LA. Mm, mm -hmm. Uh mm -hmm. there's there's a grassroots one that I give a lot to called like West Lake Community Table. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they there's like West Lake Park and they uh give to the houseless community there and um that's awesome and yeah man to me part of artwork is all about like using what how can i serve mm -hmm. using this the abilities that i have mm -hmm. uh and yeah that's that's one way that i figured out you can do it i mean that's interesting um just give i give anywhere from like a sliding scale like 10 to 30 percent if I, if I feel comfortable mm -hmm. doing that, mm -hmm. it's not all. Sometimes I need to just cover overhead and stuff. No, I, I totally get that. I think that's the beautiful thing. It's it's learning that. I mean, if there's a balance to anything in life, it's knowing that there's always going to be a time to give, mm -hmm. and there's always going to be a time where you need to kind of you know, uh, definitely, you know, partition off those resources where they're needed so that you can still kind of Put fuel your the own dream. Oxygen mask on. First exactly. <laughs> Hell yeah. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. For sure. But um. But yeah, no, I love I love uh, being involved in the community that way and giving what I can. And, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And what else? Yeah, sometimes, like in the past, I don't know. It feels like right now it's it's real. Uh, we're in just just this crisis and people are displaced and mm -hmm. it's it feels a lot about like helping out people here. I mean, all you For have sure. to do is walk out the door. Mm -hmm. down the sidewalk and see how bad it needs help out here mm -hmm. oh definitely mm -hmm. definitely do you, th Back to you. Go ahead. Oh, well do you think that in terms of in terms of art do you think it's needed more no more now than ever in these kind of in these kind of times it is kind of you know especially with with how you know people have been losing jobs and all those kind of things it seems that people want to kind of tighten up and kind of isolate <laughs> because of those reasons and i feel like well, it's because they don't have a choice of course, mm -hmm. of course, you know, I mean, it's, it's definitely there. The, the, it's definitely the first reaction. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think that, you know, with art, you know, it's kind of it's at that point where 
that idea of making a connection of of broadening our sight even if we are struggling because we're all struggling together i think is a huge thing and i was wondering if you if you feel the same way yeah i mean yeah. right right now it's hard to pinpoint like a hierarchy of people who need help because it feels like we're all kind of oh hell yeah confronted with mm -hmm. a lot of challenges that are uh that are just really good opportunities for us to grow and to mm -hmm. adapt and figure out what to do and yeah mm -hmm. um I, I rise to a challenge and, and another great piece of advice to someone starting out mm -hmm. uh, this just came to mind is like it's a puzzle mm. and uh and being a business person and, and doing your your uh artwork and working for yourself essentially is mm -hmm. a puzzle and yeah and you just got to kind of learn how to have fun with the puzzle. <laughs> for sure yeah. for sure yeah i mean do you think that puzzle ever finishes or do you think it's just kind of like the idea of like figuring it out is kind of like where the, where it's at right the end point is mm -hmm. is not where where it's needed but the journey you know this yeah. the journey of oh kind of yeah, yeah. I, d I just saw this r really great art documentary that uh there was like one of the abstract expressionists mm -hmm. from the 50s. He was like really hot in the 50s when it all came out. Mm -hmm. And he showed with like Jackson Pollock. And then suddenly he like wanted to branch out and like just try something completely different and just oh, wow. fell utterly off the map. Mm -hmm. but, but he's like one of the last living people. Wow. That time, that yeah, period. from that yeah. chapter in time. Yeah. And mm -hmm. he's. Uh, and now his art is like, <laughs> is like mm -hmm. the 16th of the price as like his peers his, at the yeah. time. But, wow. but he still does it. And uh -huh. He finds a way to, to survive well. And yeah. sometimes it's just a matter of staying alive. And mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I have a good question, actually. So um, in terms, I mean, I, I guess one of the biggest questions that ours, this is a big question, I guess. We'll kind of veer up. It'll veer <laughs> us off a little bit. But um Everybody wants to know who who is an artist and also people who are purchasing art. Like, how do you price your artwork? Like, how, how is the it? best way that you could explain how you decide to price your artwork? And do you think that there should be a set way to do it? Like, I, I you know, a lot of people price it by time. A lot of people, pr people price it by the amount of money they spend on that medium. Mm -hmm. um, and or what are just what they think it's worth overall. Mm -hmm. How do you go about um, doing that, if you don't mind? Yeah. Telling us about yeah. what you know, what a price of this might be and how you mm -hmm. got to get Oh there. sure, yeah. Well these are these are hundred and fifty dollars a piece. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, with the frame. They're a hundred and twenty dollars without a frame. Mm. And uh, I came up with that price because well it covers my overhead. Mm -hmm. It covers the time that it takes me to do it, which is anywhere from like two hours to two weeks. <laughs> and, um, and it's, I, I feel like I've done enough painting now, mm -hmm. like, like professionally, like trying to paint as a business for, I don't know, it's been, it's been seven or eight years that oh, I've wow. just been doing this, and yeah. I still feel like a baby at it. But oh, of course. <laughs> but for, for all those hard hours yeah. I've put in and uh -huh. all those, like, mistakes I've made. For sure. Um, learning to become a master of my mistakes, I feel like I'm able to bump it up a little bit more and, mm -hmm. and remain sensitive to, to my clients' needs, too, and to keep things accessible. And for sure. Um, I, you know, I, I'll work with people if they're mm -hmm. a couple bucks short or, I mean, yeah, I, I like to have it. I'll just like to paint it and get it out and move <laughs> it. <laughs> like, please take me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Make space. It's good to have a lot of storage. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. keep your desk clean at home. So mm -hmm. you have plenty of, cause, uh, yeah, you really, you really want to remain unattached to, mm -hmm. uh, to like, ideas and just hunker down and do the good work do for what sure you need to do yeah yeah was there ever a time in that seven to eight years where you felt like you were at that point of like is this what i want to do did you ever have the doubt i guess is the real question or did you or were you always like this is it this is this is my passion or you know or did you have that you know that feeling of man if like something doesn't 
change, I'm gonna have to go do something else, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've uh, I've worked I've worked a couple seasons on a farm, mm -hmm. and uh, and just kind of got my ass kicked out there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it I was do like it. Yeah. working yeah. Hard like work. six to eight months straight mm -hmm. out in the sun, out in the in the wilderness, in the farm, and yeah, um, and like. Just living real frugally and living off the land, which is great, which is like, mm -hmm. oh, man, <laughs> I, I, I really miss those places out in like Berry Creek, which are now on fire. Oh, man. We're on fire. But, uh, mm -hmm. but yeah, I, I had I had my doubts, but mm -hmm. um, it just keeps me coming back. It's just yeah. like I said, it's that thing I must do. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Interesting. I, I can't really imagine a life without it, but I can imagine just branching out and doing other things to okay. to keep the wheels rolling. Like oh, for sure. I play a lot of music mm -hmm. and guitar. And mm -hmm. um, I grew up playing in bands and touring and stuff, and I still have dreams of doing that, too, on the side. Oh, nice. Yeah. Wow. Very cool. Yeah. And so you would you say, then, that your music and your history with music, like, truly in, like in many ways probably does, influence the paintings that you're making now? Do you ever think of a song you played and you're like, that just inspired a painting or like yeah. that just inspired mm. a color scheme or something, you know, is yeah, that, I'm I, sure that happens for you. all. I time. know. Like we had this interview one time and I, t I told you, I don't listen to music at all. Well, yeah. that was like a flat face lie. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, You're like, no, I love roll, it. Like, yeah. Beethoven, the uh -huh. misfits and everything in between. Full mm -hmm. spectrum. Yeah. <laughs> no, hell yeah. No, for sure. And, uh, uh -huh. And my voice is hoarse because I was singing in the car on the way here. Dude, <laughs> I love it. You got a you got a song in your heart, man. Yeah, yeah. you gotta Hell let yeah. it out. Yeah, it's part of the creative process. Do you know? are are any of these uh, pieces of art? Do they? Does the music you're listening to inspire the piece? Like, let's say for example, you're listening to something and maybe the the connection isn't there between you and the piece. Like, do you switch and you're like, ooh, like that music is like really allowing the piece to kind of form itself. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. The, the what you see here, like the colors that you see are an absolute mirror mm -hmm. of my environment and my emotional state. Wow. And, uh, mm -hmm. and um, just getting into the flow of that, that uh, infinite organizing power, mm -hmm. intelligence of nature that just like mm -hmm. keeps all this together. It's oh, the amen. glue that holds all this together. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh -huh. yeah, sure, a song will uh, will trigger kind of an opening mm -hmm. for me. And, mm -hmm. um, there are different degrees of it. Like when you're working out at the gym, you know, yeah. there's, there's a certain time to listen to a certain music. Oh, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. Um, no, I get that. Interesting. Yeah. I saw – I'm – I, I've heard of some of my my friends who are also painters or work in the in the, the art realm somewhere and they l work in silence and prefer it and which is n a concept for me and I don't necessarily understand so I'm like, How do you <laughs> it's not very to yeah it's very you know, like to me. anything like even like uh -huh. some crickets chirping or something you know but mm -hmm. Um, it's it's just interesting how that how creativity comes to so many people in so many different ways, mm -hmm. and uh, it's okay if you don't want to listen to music, although I think that it really helps. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just it's interesting to correlate that with all the things that are being made today, and all the things you look at something and like you look at your work and you're like. I mean, something was going on in his environment. You, have, uh, you might not know what it was, but like something's going on there, and he he was uh -huh. he might have been listening to music, you know, but mm -hmm. probably wasn't quiet, you know. Yeah. And so <laughs> it's yeah, it's mm -hmm. like I yeah. wonder what maybe we've talked about him before. Um, Cy Twombly, what he was listening Ooh. to when he was making his his pieces, you know, mm -hmm. or was he not listening to anything? Oh yeah, you know? Beethoven's yeah. fifth. Yeah. <laughs> He was really into that one. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. interesting. Oh, you know what? I heard something about Cy Twombly though that his uh, his like scribbles. Mm -hmm. I, I know I don't want to call them scribbles, but a better They're word more than, than scribbles. They're <laughs> more than scribbles. <laughs> <laughs> um, but his drawings are are actually like direct emanation of Morse code. Mm. What? Because he was like in the military. Wow. Huh. In like World War II, and he was like one of the code. Really? He was like getting getting these codes in. And uh huh. And uh, 
and making drawings from them. I mean, I don't want to butcher it. No, no, that I mean that's like, totally, already like, like a, this. This is just a big game of telephone for me. <laughs> but, but that's what I understand about his drawings. Wow, interesting. And so there's uh-huh. a really good example of mm-hmm. of uh, using sound waves as a mm. uh, source of. He definitely yeah. wasn't listening to music. <laughs> he went <laughs> then. He was like full on into some stuff that we can't even comprehend. Maybe. For like, sure. Yeah, yeah. If that's like. 100% true. I mean, I believe it probably he had, I mean, a lot of people will look, I, I mentioned him because he is one of those artists where people look at it and like, oh my God, why would, we, why would anybody pay a single cent for this? Oh. Like, it's just, a, I pay a, many a, cents. I know, like, <laughs> it's just a, a, a little sketch, a little scribble on, you know, my kindergartner uh-huh. can do it, you know, anybody right. can do it, but there's but something. he did it. He did yeah. it. And he was there with the crown in his hand. Yeah, mm-hmm. and he, he was confident in it, I'm sure, in so many, many more ways than a lot of people are with themselves. And mm-hmm. that's what made him, he makes him so powerful. And there's a deeper meaning. And I didn't know anything hardly about Sai Twombly, but I know about his work and the kind of prestige mm-hmm. that it has and the kind of like lack of prestige that it has at the same time where people are like, why? That's but good. It's uh, interesting because uh-huh. there there's always something deeper to a painting when you look at it and you think that there's nothing. Yeah. And it's it's um, and the person next to yeah. you is like in tears. Oh, for sure. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. Do you ever have you ever faced that kind of criticism about about your work? Like, oh, like anyone anyone could do it. Like, it's it's just you know like you know multiple colors of paint put together. You oh know? yeah. Yeah. The biggest <laughs> critic. <right here>. <laughs> <laughs> really. I torture myself. Interesting. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Why? Sometimes. Uh, I find, especially l- lately with, like, big work, mm-hmm. um, maybe I'm just trying to force it and just do yeah. uh, big work, even though I feel like doing small work. Mm. But, but um, yeah, I, t- I torture myself, too. There's, like, a voice. There's, like, a helpful voice and, mm-hmm. a, and a devil on your shoulder. <laughs> 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 Who typically wins out is the real question. Um... I, I don't know until it's done. Usually the angel is right at the end of the, the day. But, like, See? but the next morning when yeah. you walk back in the studio, uh-huh. it's just like, <laughs> there's the artwork, there's the dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> no. Have you have you uh, have you thrown away any any work that's been like fully? You've gone to that point of being like, okay, it's done. You saw it the next day. Do you toss it? I don't throw away work anymore. Mm. Anymore. Because. Uh-huh. because People love what I hate the most. Yeah. <laughs> oh, of course. They're like someone will come for like a studio tour to buy something and mm-hmm. I'll show them like, check out this new thing. I yeah. just, it's still wet. <laughs> and they're like, what's that thing over in the trash? Yeah. And I'm like, Ooh. Like, it's the most Bring that out right now. <laughs> uh, if you say so. So, mm-hmm. so yeah. I like, there's a quote from one of my all time favorite authors, Clarissa Pinkola Estes. Mm-hmm. Okay. She says, um, Something to the effect of just because you don't like it doesn't mm. mean it's not medicine for someone else. Right. Mm. Yes, mm. that is like the ultimate truth. You yeah. know, just like you were saying a minute ago, we were talking about worth and Cy Twombly's, you know, like mm-hmm. somebody's looking at it being like, what the hell? And then somebody else is looking at it like, oh my gosh, this Can't is the most beautiful yeah. thing that I've ever seen and in tears. And mm-hmm. that, I mean, it just proves that art in any form is such an individual experience and it, it could never uh, y- nobody could ever tell you that you are worth something or not worth something unless you truly believe it yourself for sure uh, and Love that. i mean Love it's that. Just, yeah. yeah it's just that that's the biggest question who who even decides what the worth is you know do we mm-hmm. do rely on the um, big galleries or the big names like gagosian and mm-hmm. you know um uh, the Guggenheim to tell us those things or do we go on our own path and we wait for the people who really care and we can communicate with to like tell us that worth and I think um, with artists a lot of us get stuck in our head and with something we were mentioning um, earlier in the in the show about how um, you know sometimes you have to like if you're starting artists and you're struggling you don't know how to start and get your get out there like mm-hmm. go inside you don't want to get stuck in your head but you have to keep everyone else out like at the same time mm. because it could it could really cloud you and so it sometimes it is good to just lock yourself in your room cool. and really assess where you're at and make a bunch of s- stuff and then get out there somebody out there wants it and will appreciate it so mm. get out get away for at least a little bit and then come back 
you know, um, into society and, you know, make some, make some change and then go back again, go mm-hmm. in, in and out of the, pr- you have to go in and out on the process and it's yeah. a completely crucial. Yeah. Thing. Well, I think, isn't there, isn't there, isn't there a, <laughs> no, it was a great rant. I think there's, it reminds me of the, the idea that, you know, the next generation always is supposed to inform the state because the, the state or civil like society as it is, uh, in its, in its flawed self is always going to, want to be stable Mm -hmm. and so it takes that that interchange between kind of listening to listening to the next generation to the new ideas allowing those to filter in and then allow for that progress even though it may be slow to kind of continue on and thread on and that's Mm -hmm. that it sounds like it's like the idea of uh, like how you were saying about like how you you go with the seasons of your creativity Mm -hmm. and you go in and out you incubate and you kind of allow things to to not be rushed. And that's always been an issue for me and I'm sure, you know, for I feel like for every artist, you know, is that idea that you don't you don't need to push things and that we do have like 8 years does seem like a long time, right? Like even for me, 6 sure. years seems like a long time being a professional artist, but you know, we have like imagine when we're 50, you know, imagine when we really have some wow. you have some 10, you know, tenure <laughs> on a on on what we're doing and it's like it's such like an exciting feeling and that you know, life isn't going anywhere, you know? Yeah. Do, do you guys know uh, Wassily Kandinsky, Evolution of the Spiritual Triangle? No. Uh, not specifically. I've definitely heard of it. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, yeah. Maybe well, he know. wrote this book. It's about this thick, mm-hmm. and it's worth every read that thing. It's so good. But mm-hmm. Wow. But so, so there's a triangle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's a creative triangle, and um, the way that it's measured is that, like, a visionary is alone at the pinnacle of the triangle. Okay. If they're alone, they've got no one beside them but themselves and their ideas. And then as you move down, there's if there's some more building blocks, there's some more support and people mm-hmm. around you who like what you do. Mm-hmm. Down all the way to the bottom is just like Main Street. It's mm. like the Walmart of yeah paintings or whatever like everyone knows it mona mm-hmm. lisa everyone mm-hmm. it's a household name yes so so i think going back to what you were saying is like you really got to learn how to get comfortable at the pinnacle of the triangle just mm-hmm. really i love that yeah. kind of channel like some maternal almost like motherly energy with yourself and like re- get really comfortable and have faith in what you're doing and just just trust that it's right. there for a reason mm-hmm. and just keep mm-hmm. going. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, I, I'm definitely not perfect, perfect in that. I am still working on that myself, getting yeah. out of my head, and, <laughs> you know, but getting in, getting in uh-huh. my head, but getting out of my head at the same time. And, you know, it's, it's a long process and it's mm-hmm. a, it's a good process. It's a good practice of patience, you know, like you were talking about earlier, like with your grandmother, you know, mm-hmm. and, um, I mean that patience is one of the most like, uh, most beautiful things that we can have if you can really truly understand why we need it Mm. and um, I'm trying to practice more patience with myself and trying to spend more time in nature and like really get in touch with why Mm. why am I making these things in the first place and and reminding myself of that and it's Mm -hmm. really good it's such a time of Mm self-examination too. Mm. yeah Yeah. of course of course Mm -hmm. yeah yeah I mean, I think that's one of the, the, the best things about what this is. It is, a, it, it is in its form what we were trying to do with this podcast is basically kind of understand what your form of self-examination is and then how can we then in turn learn from it. And then how can we through, again, uh, like you said, like do it together, D-I-T, right? Bring D-I-T. it back home. Yes, D-I-T. Do it together. Do it we, together. we can learn how to just build, build off of one yeah. another. You know, and I think that's a beautiful thing. I just I need to give that person a shout out. Yeah, that please book do. Is so dumb. Hell yeah. Mm. Yeah, no, for sure. It's called The Art of Asking. The Art of Asking. That's a great book for anyone. Anyone to in get into the arts. The Art of Asking. Self motivated. Well, maybe we'll even um, we'll put we'll put that on. Um, we'll write it down in the uh, description or whatever, so that wherever we can get it accessible. So yeah. in case anybody was interested in Amanda Palmer. It. Okay. Amanda Palmer. Thank you, Amanda Palmer. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, was there any more questions that maybe you want to uh, address let's before? Let's let's check the questions. Let's check the Thank questions. you guys for yeah. tuning in. Yeah. And catching up with uh, Patrick's Fantasy. Yeah.
Yeah, thank you guys. Ooh. Thanks for watching. The sa double double zeros uh, said something that was very interesting. Uh, she said, "I have a degree in sculpting and art history, but was told I should have been a nurse. Mm. Now that I am Classic. across country from them, I feel my artist is arising, arising, but now, but no clue how to start." You know, and and I would say um, before you know, before I get off to Patrick, um, you know, I think that's the beautiful thing is sometimes you know as much as uh, the, our family wants to have our best intentions in mind again it is it is your own life and you know you you got to make your own decisions and again it's 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 a practice in letting go for everyone involved in that kind of a situation so um with that being said i mean what would you what would you say to someone who doesn't know how to start yeah well you know that's a tough one i mean mm -hmm. money is freedom Oh, for sure. Yeah. Definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I like to try to find ways to do both. Yeah. Like, um, like, I don't know. Just let people know that you're an artist. Like, next time you're at the at the uh, FaceTime Zoom meeting or something, and you're getting to know each other, like introduce yourself as an artist mm -hmm. or as a painter mm -hmm. or, or a sculptor, and and have some conviction and see, just experiment and see what kind of change, what kind of shift that brings for you when yeah. you say yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. And, and what kind of a, uh, reaction it elicits. Mm. Mm. That's a really good point. Mm -hmm. If yeah. you truly, I mean, if you truly believe that's what you are too, like, mm -hmm. and you talk to people about that, they are going to see that that's what you are, that's what you believe. Mm -hmm. And that's, I mean, that's it. Like, yeah. you are what you, <laughs> you know, express of yourself. Yeah. And, um, and it could be a conversation to have with your boss too, you know, like I'm, I'm a sculptor and mm -hmm. I need some more hours in my studio. Yeah. yeah. We accommodate that. You might be Amen. surprised. They, like, I think communication, right? try. communication is key at all times, mm -hmm. at all times, you know, and I think, you know, shout out to another, to another, uh, good book, but this is from my childhood. Just so stories is, you know, I, a leper can never change its spots, right? So if that's what you oh. truly are supposed to be, and that's what you're supposed to be, and you're gonna figure it out, you know. And I think cool. that's that's the best thing. Just yeah. figure it out. Also, awesome. yeah. I mean, I I know that's a huge issue um, with with artists. There's still a lot of people who don't understand why you're doing art in the first place. But mm -hmm. have some compassion for yourself and for your family, and trust that if they really do love you, they will you know, see that this is who you are and who you're meant to be. And mm -hmm. it's, it's hard on the outside and it doesn't look, I mean, obviously it's not the easiest thing, but I mean, really trust yourself and trust your family and they will, they'll, they'll see it in you and they'll support you. Mm -hmm. And, Amen. um, Amen. yeah. Yeah. Also, um, I, this is something that we haven't even talked to you about. Good, sir. Um, and it also is going to touch on another question that uh, Instagram has been asking us. And that's kind of weird to say. Our audience. Sorry, I didn't mean to be so, uh, you know, non-personal. But uh, one of the things that we do at Artery DTLA amongst doing interviews, doing paying studio visits to amazing artists, getting you connected with a community of, of people that can help. Uh, maybe bring some more clarity to your situation if you're an artist or if you, or even if you just appreciate art, if you're a collector, is we also do, we're also going to be uh, providing virtual art shows. Mm -hmm. And I know we've been, we've been keeping this guy waiting. He's been trying mm -hmm. to get into our, uh, our, our art studio He's slash. To break in. And <laughs> he literally. <laughs> yeah, so we, uh, Julie and I, we have a uh, exhibition space uh, in Big Art Labs. It's this beautiful, beautiful uh, uh warehouse uh, complex that allows for multiple artists uh, it's actually the biggest art complex in uh, California shout out big art labs uh, and there we have our exhibition space and our, we have a date now we actually have a date for the show <laughs> oh my we're yeah, gonna, yeah. Uh, no. yeah. <laughs> we're gonna, we've been pushing it pushing yes. it you know because obvious um, uh, a lot of different reasons but yeah Stay firm on this one and mm -hmm. oh, I have make full it happen. Trust in all the <laughs> pushing it. I'm yeah. so excited. Oh, it's yeah. going to be I great. I can't wait to, to show with Linda mm -hmm. Jumi Rock. Too. Yeah. Oh, Linda. So, this is also going to be a surprise Love for, Linda. for Jumi. Uh, February 17th, guys. February 17th is the date. It's a Wednesday. Wednesday. Is, isn't yes. that Valentine's Day? No, no 14th. that's the 14th. Oh. 14th. A couple no. days. We're going to. What is our, our producer? Where? Oh. Where? Where uh, it's at space. our exhibition space, uh, it's at 651 Clover Street. It's 
right off of Maine. Um, I guess uh, another point of reference would be uh, Chinatown. Chinatown. Arts District, of course. See, look at look. <laughs> Thank you to our beautiful, yeah. our beautiful producer, producer out here. <laughs> it oh is in goodness. the heart of the Arts District. It's in the heart of the Arts yes. District. Yes. And um, mm -hmm. we w will. It it will mostly be virtual. I know everybody's kind of overwhelmed with virtual things happening right now, but yeah. uh, we're gonna make it worth it for sure. I mean, you'll mm -hmm. get to see more of Patrick. You'll get to see more of Linda, mm -hmm. which we had on the podcast last week. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. That's great. And oh, yeah. um, there is opportunity if anyone out there would like to come by and see these you know beautiful pieces in person there's yeah. opportunity to come by and mm -hmm. um, privately view uh, the pieces as well but we will be yeah. uh, making it accessible through happening for sure to, for sure um, see um yeah to have a full full art experience exactly you know? and then I, I guess it also points back to the fact that what we are trying to do is because of things are so limited for our local artists, what we want to do is we want to create and, you know, just create a space for people to breathe some beautiful life into. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's how it's been for us creating there. So we're happy to, you know, open our doors, especially to, to good friends and to whoever else is going to be uh, featured in the future to uh, have these kind of events. So I uh, definitely want to let you guys know about that. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. anything else? Any other, yeah, any other so questions? Yeah, it's so gracious of you, man. Oh. Thank Thank you both. Thanks no, of, of course, of course. You. you were literally the first person we thought of was was this guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're Amazing. number one. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, let me see. Are there any other questions that we can answer? Think about you guys all the time too. Thank you. Um, uh, trying to think. Other than yeah, what you know, what what are we doing? We you know, I think we answered everything. Yeah. I think we're good. Luke, thanks, guys. I actually. I think one more thing would be, you know, what would you want to, to kind of tie this up with a bow? What, what, can, what kind of, uh, what did you have any other events going on, any other shows, series, anything going anything on in your world that we can promote for anything you? Anything new we could expect to see from you in the future? Yeah. This <laughs> is the newest, the hottest thing right here. Just <laughs> just sitting in this seat. I'm just so uh, grateful to oh, you guys. Awesome. Oh, you're freaking for awesome, man. Making it happen. Mm. Dude, no, of course. I mean, again, thank you to... Uh, obviously to everyone that's involved, especially to the new owner of Happening in Downtown LA. Uh, couldn't do it without him. Um, you know, thankfully we are provided a platform that allows us to gauge with you, especially when it comes to, when it comes to all things arts. That's why we're on the Happening in Downtown LA uh, IG Live. Basically what we're trying to do is kind of create a funnel for people who are interested in art, especially local art, to, not only see it through happening in downtown LA, but also hop onto the Artery DTLA page. Uh, you'll get some more just in-depth looks at you know the content we're creating for you guys. So, mm -hmm. if you uh, also if you're an artist and you are interested in potentially being talked to or featured or would love to get yourself out there, please send us a message. You could uh, message happening in downtown LA. You could also message Artery. Um, and we are here. We're here for you. We we want to you know highlight as many mm -hmm. creatives out there as we can and show that LA and specifically downtown LA is thriving still. Thriving. Now, you know we may be losing a lot in many senses with um all everything that's going on, but mm -hmm. art is thriving and it's there for you and it's we wanna we wanna keep it uh, keep it alive mm -hmm. as best as we can. Yeah. And again, the artist that we're talking to is Patrick Semple. His Instagram account is at Patrick, that is P-A-T-R-I-C-K underscore Semple, that is S-E-M-P-L-E -E underscore. He has great, amazing work. Check it out. Support local artists. All the good stuff. Yeah. And Thank yeah. You so much. Thank All you, right. Patrick. All right. I think Thank that's you. that's it. That's a wrap. Yeah. Beautiful. Thanks Appreciate you, brother. Me too. Dude. Hell yeah, man. Bye-bye. Bye.